In April 2023, nearly 14 months ago, I started a new speedrun to Max Cape series, a hardcore Iron Man. Unfortunately, while pickpocketing men for a start of 250 GP within 15 minutes of the account, we died and lost our only life. I didn't let that demotivate me though. As a normal Iron Man, I was still restricted to gathering all items and resources myself. And as time went on, I decided to set a crazy goal. Try to achieve max total within 1600 hours. Today, that journey comes to an end. This is the final episode of the Iron Man Max Cape speedrun series. Welcome, as we overcome the final obstacle of the account. The state of being poor. I have 22 mil cash. I sold everything from my Slayer grind last episode, and now I feel rich. But the reality is, this 22 mil doesn't get me as far as I wish it did. I'm currently sitting at 7.2 mil smithing XP, and with 5.8 mil remaining to 99, doing gold ore the entire way will cost me 23 mil. So fantastic, I'm only 1 mil short. It's not that bad, until you realize I still need to buy 95 to 99 construction and 96 to 99 herkor. I could have done Giant's Foundry and not spend that much on smithing, but I mean, come on. I can't not smith gold ores with these rates. I'm averaging 455k an hour so comfortably. Giant's Foundry is barely even half of that. So, naturally, I decided to full send 98 smithing right now and worry about making GP later on for construction. Even if I'm gaining 0 XP during the money making method that I choose, as long as I make 1.8 mil an hour in raw gold, it'll be worth doing. I'm sure I can find something. So, all in one day's hard work, here is 94 smithing. 95 smithing. 96. 97 smithing. And finally, after nearly 100,000 gold ores were smithed and dropped in one day, here is the last level for now, 98. After that, I did some last minute liquidating of some stuff in my bank. I had some leftover rune arrows, dragon darts, and even rune darts from crystal imps or slayer or honestly I don't even know, but they are worth something so I'm selling them. So now that I have 4.5 mil cash and I need about another 20 million for max, it's time to theorycraft some money making methods. Coincidentally, over the last couple months, Jagex has been desperately adding raw GP money making methods for gold farmers in the Wildy. The first thing that I looked at was the Wildy Agility course, where unfortunately I do have to ignore the 65k an hour agility XP that I can get since I'm already 99 and it has no value to me. But even on top of that, I can get up to 3 mil an hour in raw GP. I mean look at this drop table, 2 1 in 3 chances for a 30k alkabol per lap, that's just insane. There is a downside though, the rewards per lap go up depending on how many laps you've completed in a row. If I were to say log out from a PKer, my streak will go down. So while this is a reliable GP method, it's not good enough to where I want to roll the dice to see if I run into PKers or not. So I decided to pass on this. Then I took a look at revs, and I mean, every world had at least two bots, the whole thing was just unappealing. So it was time to test something, something that I never thought I'd be doing in a million years. On the Max Cape Iron Man speedrun series, I'm going to mine Runite. Assuming some competition, mining rune is normally at least 1 mil an hour in raw GP. However, look at the success rate at level 98. 7.42%. When we consider knife logging and moving tiles for double rolls, we have a 14.2% chance to succeed, just about double. So also consider the time spent hopping. Since it's in-game time, we can scout on alts and stay at the login screen until we find something. This makes it even better in-game GP an hour for us. I mean look at my XP tracker, it's only counting my time logged in. 34k? That's 269 ores per hour, and each ore is 12.8k. Obviously we still have to make the bars, but I mean we're mining 3.4 mil an hour worth of bars. Also consider that 34,000 mining XP gained is 34,000 less XP to do for 99 later. Not to mention the smithing XP that I'll get from these room bars will be less smithing XP that I have to buy with gold ores. Basically what I'm trying to say is, this is really good for us.
As the hour went on, I guess my RNG got worse and my ores an hour went down. However, even at 31k mining XP per hour, I'm still getting 246 ores, or 3.1 mil. And of course, that's before including any mining XP progress. I do still need to bank Herblor secondaries, so just randomly throughout my day, I end up looting whiteberries and potato cactus whenever possible. And speaking of Herblor secondaries, meet the worst, most boring secondary in the entire game, Wines of Zamorak for ranging potions. This is the slowest gathered secondary, and not only that, it's also located in the level 50 wilderness, so you have to be careful not to be attacked the whole time as well. The Wines of Zamorak respawn rate can vary based off of world population. Here is a chart that shows the world population on the left and how long the wine takes to respawn on the right. For the world to have over 1780 people, it's already 12.5% faster than the second fastest tier. Letting this number go all the way down to 11 ticks per respawn, which is roughly 40% slower than the fastest. So, especially as a speedrun account, it's very important for me to use a world with over 1780 people. And that's pretty much only world 330. So if anyone finds me, I can't even hop to another world. I have to stay here. I need roughly 4.6k of these bad boys. And getting one wine every 7 ticks, it's going to take roughly 5.5 hours. And since that guy was PKing on his feet only controlled account, I decided to take a break and come back later. Alright, so when I came back, I moved my inventory around a little bit. And now we have minimal mouse movement, I just need to click every time the white circle does a full 7 tick cycle, making this much easier. You guys can't see it from this angle, but if you right click under my Iron Man, you'll see 6 other accounts. This is a singles area, so I had all of my alts stand under my Iron Man, along with two other guys that I hired just in case anything went too far south. That guy had a 1 in 7 chance of attacking my iron. Of course, the first attempt for someone to try to PK me, and it lands just like that. I just finished up my second trip here, banking 1954 wines at once, and hopefully never to return here ever again. Those runic ores that we mined earlier did get used during our smithing grind, I just haven't shown it. But basically, it was very fast, I just found a world with infinite coal stock, and went about making my room bars. I didn't really need a coal bag since I could just buy 200 coal at a time from the shop without banking. That rush 98 smithing grind is finally about to pay off. At level 99 smithing, using 3 runite bars, I can finally smith rune 2 hand swords. These alk for 38,400 each. This is the most effective GP you can get from smithing anything. And since it requires level 99, well, at the very least, I can boost from 98 with Dwarven Stouts, and it should be well worth it. It still hasn't really clicked to me on how good Mining Runite is or was, since it was such a last minute decision, but we're finally getting close to the step where we see the raw GP live. At the time of this clip, I have 36 hours left before 1600 hours played, and we got what? 95 to 99 construction, 96 to 99 herd war, half of a mining level, and a full 98 to 99 smithing level left to do. It's impossible for me to know if I'll make it within 1600 hours or not. Since my herb runs are still being worked on, I've only half banked some skills, and I'm not sure exactly how much GP I need left in order to afford max. So at this point, we just anxiously wait. Not at all where I wanted to process Alks, but it's pretty much my only option. So, welcome to 3 ticks, 4 granites, 300 Alks. I also grabbed some random items that I found in my bank that I haven't Alked or gotten rid of yet. So on top of our room 2 hands, we also need to Alk those. Coming up to the end of the trip, I am now 11 mil cash richer. The crazy thing is, if I remember correctly, we needed about 17 mil for 99 construction. So we aren't even done yet. 
However, this GP gives me the start towards making logs into planks as I haven't accounted for butler costs yet, along with unfinished potions for her floor. Essentially, we're 100% returning to get more runite, however, there are still things that I can sell, just not yet. In order to get a final GP count to be just enough for the max cape plus the 2.2 mil for buying it, we have to do some skill hopping. Step 1, we have leftover mahogany logs from way back when we were a noob, and our kingdom was on mahoganies. Back then, we were actually delusional enough to think that we'd have leftover GP for mahogany furniture. With our 1000 mahogany planks, we are going to unfortunately have to do mahogany homes. These logs will either cost me 13 GP per XP doing furniture, or 5 doing homes. The cost of mahogany homes is roughly the same as Tigrax, so in terms of GP struggle, we're still spending roughly the same amount for 99. The only downside is that we only get 230k an hour here, so it's kind of not really good. Thankfully, we do at least get 346 XP per plank versus the 123 for Teaks, so at the very least, we make significantly less planks for a full hour of training. Overall though, Teaks are more XP per hour, including the time to make planks. And timed perfectly by accident, this is our last set of mahogany planks and we have exactly 401 points from contracts. This is just enough to buy the helmet piece which is 400, granting us a 0.4% bonus XP for the remaining of our construction. And with that 0.4% bonus XP buff, I decided to do some cape racks for a small period of time, just to rid some teak planks that I made earlier. Here is 96 construction. And yes, left click build and remove is real, so I pretty much just have to close my eyes while pressing 1 and 4, but at least we're not telegrabbing wines I guess. Here is level 97. And this is why we rush 97 construction here. That pushed Herbler to our lowest skill again, meaning we can do a round of Tears of Guthics for Herbler XP, since it always goes towards our lowest stat. If you ever have the choice for 15k Khan or Herbler XP in 3 minutes as an Iron Man, do yourself a favor, choose Herbler. I have been idly collecting secondaries for potions, and now, with 26 and a half hours until 1600 hours played, it's time to get a final count and try out Herbler. I looted Kingdom one more time for more herb drops, and then it was time to go through my tab of grimy herbs before making all unfinished potions. With how close it is to 1600 hours, I really want to minimize the amount of trips we go to make unfinished potions. Can't forget my 5 more crushed nests, that's 900 Herbler XP with Toad Flax. Goodbye to 1.1 mil hard earned cash, and hello to 5.5k potions ready to be made. Starting off with ranging potions, here is 97 Herbler. Last set of ranging potions, and next up would be Torstals. Unfortunately, because I only had 139 torso potions, that one went kind of quick, so next up is super attack pots. Next up would be the Avento potions, and I have left over Mortmeyer fungus from ages ago, so I'm gonna go through all of this, but then the remaining unfinished potions will be with Snapegrass. In some way, it feels like I've been waiting for this day for the last 10 months. 1.4 mil Herbra XP gained at once on an Iron Man feels like a dream. There's been so much prep for this, and now we're finally going through it. Here is 98 Herbler. I hope you guys didn't forget, but we still have 12,000 Caviar, which is well over 500,000 Herbler XP. 
Using these on the highest tier potion will give the most herb XP, so I'm going to start off with my ranging pots. The long day of herbivore is finally coming to an end. With 600k left to 99, and still 2k caviars left, however I am missing some herbs for 99, so the remaining caviar will be used after some more herb runs. That herb lore session enabled me to finally do what I've been wanting to do. It was now time to liquidate everything so that I can get a final count on my GP needed. To start off, I brought all of my runes to the rune shop. Yes, even body runes and mind runes. These guys might sell for 1 GP each, but that's 1 GP more than I had before. This is what it's like to be down so bad. So after doing some research, I learned that we can actually make a decent amount of GP selling our leftover potions to the shop. If you ever looked at the wiki prices of any items, for example here, let's take a look at the attack potion 4. It has a value, a high alk, and a low alk section. None of these are the GE price, so I personally never really understood what the point of value was until now. The general store will buy items from you for a percentage of that value. Every time more and more stock goes into the shop, it goes down. However, there is a cap at 10% of the value. So those attack pots that are valued at 225 GP each, after we sell 50, the remaining of our stack will sell for 22.5 GP each. Given that I have over 11k, this is more than 250k and just one potion. And thankfully, as an Iron Man who made all of my potions, I have more than just those to sell. Look at that. 1.3 mil cash in just a few minutes of selling. This is perfect. A little less than 17 hours to go. I still have to make roughly 6 mil for maxing, so back to Brunite we go. Okay, I'm 90% sure the calculator is correct. I am smithing my final set of Runite bars, which is about 400 of them. After this, I should be able to afford max. However, nearly only 10 hours remaining. This is super, super close. The Alks are done. I am once again a rich Iron Man with over 5 million gold pieces. And now, the last ever set of T-Planks that I will ever make before maxing this account. This is 99 Construction, finally banked in planks. Less than 8 hours to go. I still need some herbs, so here we are. With 6 hours remaining, here's what I have left. 500k construction, 230k mining, 230k smithing, 250k herb lore, and some herb lore prep. I'm not entirely sure how much herb lore prep I have, so it's still hard to say the exact time, but I want to say it's looking a little hopeful. I only need to farm about 1k limports, and doing 3 patches at a time and roughly 35 seconds of in-game time, this really shouldn't take long at all. And now, all the limports are farmed, and we're just about exactly 5 hours to go until 1600. It's time for the final stretch. Starting off, I left myself 30 minutes from 99 smithing, so that is step number 1. I completely lost track of time, but here is 99 smithing. 3 levels remaining, and I saved myself 1 hour of construction, so here we go. After doing 300k XP with only 70k to go until 99, I realized something. My bald ass head was showing. Normally this would never be a problem, except I worked hard for a carpenter's hat, and I'm pretty sure I just barely baked 99 construction, so I wasn't sure how much missing a 0.4% XP boost was going to hurt my banked planks. Imagine if I ran out of planks 1k from 99 construction. Okay, almost a disaster, but we're safe. Here is 99 construction. I'm not sure if I want new max with mining at granite or anywhere in the game with the potion yet, but I do want to finish herbore, so I'm going to get myself one potion off of 99 herbore for the time being. And of course, the final pot that we're making is energy potions with Herolanders that I've gotten from Kingdom or Slayer. That is herbore done. Time to gear for the final time before max cape. So, assuming we can do 230k mining in the next 2 hours and 45 minutes, we've easily secured 1600 hours. Given that this should take a maximum of 2 hours, I think it's safe to say we've gotten our goal. You guys gotta think about this. 
My goal was 1600 hours so long ago in this series. We've managed to come within one hour of that. That is insane. Even if I was within 20 hours I would have said it was close, but this is less than one hour over a period of 1600. Three. Two. One. 99 mining and 99 herbivore and 2,277 total. I will hop if this gets chopped down. Oh, I'll try it once. Actual hog chat, let's go. You guys are beasts. What? What are you doing, teenagers? Oh my god. Don't, don't fucking do this. This happened again. There it is. Success. We've made it. The run ends after we buy the max cape. Equip it. And officiate the time with Hans in Lumbridge. The plug-in timer is correct, but here we are. 66 days, 15 hours, 9 minutes. Or 1599 hours and 9 minutes. And if we do the math, that is 3.78 hours a day of playtime since I created this account. Special shout out to everyone who was able to make it, and I apologize for the XP waste, but hopefully it was worth it. For now, for the first time ever, I'm going to join you guys for XP wasting. With back-to-back speedruns, 792 hours into 1599, it's time for me to finally enjoy some casual gaming on my first ever Max Iron Man. Thank you everybody who joined at any point along this amazing journey, and if you enjoyed it, please drop the like and subscribe on the video, and I will see you all next time. Have a great one.